What's up you guys, Valentina here. You guys probably don't know me. I'm a designer and front-end developer and I've been making content with Clever Programmer. And today I'm gonna show you JavaScript basics and I'm gonna show you that by building the Tesla website. So let's get into it. Now, before getting so deep into understanding why JavaScript is so important for today's modern world, you know, frameworks like React, Angular, job openings are asking for a bunch of JavaScript developers. Web development is huge in the market right now. If you're serious about advancing your career, make sure you click the link in the description and join Profit with JavaScript so that you can make this year the year that you become a six-figure developer. Now, before we jump into it, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see some banger content drop every week. We are going deep in JavaScript, deep in React, and make sure you follow along. With that said, guys, I cannot wait to show you JavaScript basics, so let's get started. In this video, we're going to learn what is JavaScript, how to use JavaScript, the must know concepts of JavaScript, and then we're going to build this carousel from the Tesla website. So let's get started by looking at what is JavaScript. JavaScript is the programming language that allows you to add behavior to your web page. Basically anything that is cool that allows you to make your web page interactive and dynamic is JavaScript. Now, there's a key definition when it comes to learning JavaScript, and that is that JavaScript is a client side scripting language. That means that when you load a new page on the internet, your computer will be sent a folder of files, including at least one HTML file. This HTML file will load the JavaScript file with the script tag that will hold the JavaScript code. And this code will be in the same folder or from somewhere else in the internet. Now that we've understood what client-side scripting language means, we can now understand how to actually use JavaScript in our web page. So you can add JavaScript to your web page in multiple ways. You can add it inside your HTML file, inside the script tags in your body, or you can add it in a separate JavaScript file and link the JavaScript file in your HTML, again, through the script tags. Now, when it comes to learning the key concepts of JavaScript, I have come up with an acronym, and that is JavaScript is for very dope creators. F is for functions, V is for variables, D is for DOM, O is for objects, P is for primitives, E is for events, and C is for control flows. So let's start with functions. Functions are blocks of code to perform a particular task. So for example, the classic button on click, if you click on the button, something's gonna happen. So let's look at the general syntax of a JavaScript function. The function is defined with the keyword function followed by the function's name. In the parentheses, you can write the parameters that you're gonna need for your function, and you would only add parameters based on what you want the function to execute. Inside the function, you're going to write everything that you want the function to do. And lastly, if you want the function to run, you need to call the function. So that is how you write a JavaScript function. Next, we're going to move on to variables. Variables are containers for storing data values. When you want to declare a variable, you use the var keyword followed by the variable name. Because variables store data, we are going to assign the variable data. So if we were creating a variable of a Tesla car, we would assign it the name as a string. In JavaScript, you can also assign numbers and arithmetic operations, but we don't have to know all of that now. All we have to focus on is that a variable can store data. Now, in order we're supposed to be looking at the DOM, but it is best to first present objects. An object in JavaScript is just like an object in real life. Let's take, for example, the example of a car. The car is going to have characteristics that are going to be specific to that car. It's going to have an ID, a name, how many wheels does it have, the, what color is it, is it red, is it white, and it will also have methods such as start, break, and stop. Now, we've just looked at variables and we have learned that variables are containers storing data values. Objects are also containers, but objects contain multiple values. So let's have a look at the syntax of an object. You use the var keyword just like a variable. You then declare the object's name and then you open two curly brackets and inside the curly brackets, you store all the information that you want to store, which are in name value pairs. Those are called properties. And then you have methods. Methods are actions that can be performed by the object. And in the example of the car, Car, the method could make the car move, break, and stop. In JavaScript, everything that is not an object is a primitive. Currently, in modern JavaScript, there are seven primitive types. Those are the string, number, big int, boolean, symbol, null, and undefined. Now, there's something distinctive about primitive values, and that is primitive values are immutable values. Let's take, for example, the example of a variable. If we're creating a variable for a car and we store the information of a string, we cannot change the value of the string. The value is immutable. What we can do is that we can reassign the value to the variable. As we can see, the meaning of every primitive type is pretty self-explanatory, but there's two key primitive types that you must understand, and those are undefined and null. This has to do with the concept of time. When we try to call something that doesn't exist or doesn't exist anymore, we get the value undefined. But when we wish to use something that is empty, then the primitive value is null. Now that we've covered object and primitives, we can go back to the DOM. 
When a web page is loaded, the browser creates a document object model of the page. And what the HTML DOM model looks like is a tree of objects. Now, the HTML DOM is a standard object model and programming interface for HTML, and it defines the HTML elements as objects and the object's respective properties and methods. This object structure allows you to get, change, add, and delete all the HTML elements with the JavaScript. Now, let's have a look at how to access the HTML elements with the JavaScript. We have a button with ID demo, and what we want to do is that we want to access it so that if we click it we can then console log a message so the way to access the element is by using the method in the object document which is the method get element by id which allows us to get the element with id demo in the document after storing this information in the variable btn we can then work with this html element in the javascript so in this particular case, the reason why we want to access the HTML element of the button is because we then want to add an event listener, which we're going to be looking at right after. So now that we understood how to access HTML elements with the JavaScript, we're going to learn events. Events are actions that happen to HTML elements. Now, this can be something that the user does or something that the browser does. Now, there's two main things to remember when it comes to events, and that is that there are event handlers and the add event listener method. Event handlers are attributes to your HTML element. That means that if you have a button and you want a function to execute, when you click on the button, you would write button on click equals the function that you want to call all inside the HTML tag. The way that you can write the function is that you can write the function in line, or you can just write the name of the function that you want to call and write the function in your script tags. The add event listener method, however, attaches an event to a document. That means that after accessing your HTML element in your JavaScript, you would then add add event listener to that element. The add event listener method takes three arguments, but you just need to know the first two. That is the event and the function that you want to call when the event occurs. So again, in the case of a button, you would write the variable storing the HTML element dot add event listener, open parenthesis, the event name and the function that you want to call. And this is how you write a JavaScript event with add event listener. Now we're going to be looking at control flows. The control flow is the order in which the computer executes statements in a script. Code is run in order from the first line in the file to the last line, unless the computer runs across structures that change the control flow, such as conditionals and loops. Let's take for example the example of a form. The script will only submit data if the client fills out all the required fields. To do this, the script uses a conditional structure of if-else, so that different code executes depending on whether the form is complete or not. Next, we're going to be looking at loops. Loops can execute code multiple times. Now, there's many different types of loops in JavaScript, but we're going to be looking at the for loop. Now, let's have a look at how to write a for loop that is going to print each item in an array in a paragraph, making sure that each item is written in a different line. So what we have is an array of car models called cars, an empty string variable to store the data value of text and an undefined item variable. And the for loop is saying that for the item i starting at zero and for every item in the array, increment by one. So go through every item in the array and apply this line of code to every single element. Then this line, as we have learned by looking at the DOM, will print each item as a string in the paragraph empty element. So that was a lot of information, but this is to show how the for loop is a control flow that allows one line of code to be applied to multiple elements. Okay, so now we're going to put everything together and we are going to recreate this carousel from the Tesla website. The first thing that we have to do is that we need to problem solve. So we're going to take a blank page and we're going to focus on understanding the logic. So first things first, we already know that we're going to be working with a collection of images for this carousel to work. So the equivalent of that is that we're going to be working with an array of images. Now, any element inside an array has an index value. The first element has index zero. The second one is one, two, three. And you're going to see why this is so important to know. Now, the logic of a carousel is that we have a button. We're going to start with the right one. And every time we click on the button, we want the next image to be displayed. So let's take our index values. And if we're saying every time we click on the button, we want the next image, we're essentially adding per click one to the current index value. And this is called incrementing. However, this has to function based on a condition, right? We cannot increment forever. We need this function to stop when it reaches the last image. 
and when it reaches the last image we want the current image to go back to the first one so let's start writing this in code now i have already prepared the html and the css file we have an image two buttons all stored inside the same container and notice how we are not declaring the link of the image with the src but we have declared the name of the image and we're going to use this to dynamically assign the src path of the image the first thing that we're going to do is that we are going to dynamically link the src path from our javascript so in our javascript we're going to write document.slide.src and we will make that equal to the image path we're going to go to our browser and we can see that works now we know that we're going to be using a collection of images so i'm going to create an array called images and in the array i'm going to insert a collection of links and i'm taking my images from unsplash on unsplash you're going to type whatever you want i'm going to type tesla car and i'm going to take that link and put it in my array next we're going to access the first link with its index number so we're going to write images square bracket zero and that still works now we know that we will have three events that will make the image change we have the next button the previous button and the automatic slider and I'm going to start with the right button and I'm going to call the button by calling its ID. So I will write document.getElementById, write the ID name. Now I already know that the SRC will not be defined by the first index. We want that to be dynamic. So I'm going to replace the zero with an I. And what I stands for is item. Next, we're going to start adding some events. Now the logic is that if I click on the right button, I want the next image to display. So the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to add an event listener to the right button and that will be on click and we're going to write a function. Now this function is going to have a condition and that is, is we're only going to increment so long as the current image does not surpass the total number of images inside the array. For this reason, we are going to add the if and else statement, which is that if i is smaller than images length minus one, increment the index number by one from the current index that I'm at. Else, make the index number zero, which would then go back to the first image of the array. Now, before anything, we forgot a step, which is to declare that the i is zero, starts at zero. And if we console log the i number per button click, we will see the index number of the current image being displayed in the console log. Now notice that our numbers are 0, 1, 2. That's because we have added three images. So the first image index is 0, which means that if we have a total number of 3, the last index value will be 2. That is why the condition of the if statement is images length minus 1, because the images length will be the total number of items inside the array. So if we have three images, the last index value will be 2, because it will be 0, 1, 2. In our drawing, we put four images, so the last index value is three, but that is not to be confused because we have only added three images inside our array. Now, all we did so far was dynamically change the index of the current image that we're in, but we're not actually updating the current SRC link. So the code block that is allowing us to do that is the document slide.src images i and we want to call that inside this function however we already know that this code block of updating the image will occur when we click the right button the left button and also when the image is automatically sliding so we're going to store this line in a separate function we're going to call it set image so we're in our function we will write set image and when we go to our browser and click on the right button you can see that the images will change next we're going to move on to the automatic image slider now if you think about it the logic is exactly the same however this code block is not going to be called on a button click. It will occur automatically when the window loads. So what we're going to do is that we're going to take this code block and we will store it inside another function called slide image. The conditions are exactly the same. However, we're going to call the function on window load and we will set a timeout so that we can declare the speed of the images change. The slide out method takes two arguments, which is the function and the time. The unit of the time is in milliseconds and we could write the actual number inside the parenthesis, but I don't want to do that because if I want to change the value, I don't want to be constantly editing the value inside the function. So I'm going to create a time variable and I'm going to set it to the value of milliseconds that I want the slide images to automatically change. And I'm going to set it to 2000 and then we're going to call the function on window on load. That we've understood how to go to the next image, let's think about how to go to the previous image. This will happen with the left button and every time we click, we want to decrement. We want to go to the previous image. So in index value, we are going to be subtracting one from the current index value that the, the client is at. 
and we're gonna have a button that on every click is going to subtract one from the current item index but again we cannot decrement forever and we can only decrement based on a condition and that condition is if the current image index is bigger than zero then decrement therefore remove one if the current index is not bigger than zero make the index value images length minus one meaning the number of items in the array minus one which will give you in this case index three so the equivalent of that in code is first thing that we're gonna do is that we're gonna create a left button variable with get element id and then we're basically gonna write the same function as write button add event listener and that on the event click we'll call the function with the condition that if i is bigger than zero subtract one from the current item index and else make the index value of the current image the index of the last item in the array minus one let's look at how that looks on our browser now the slider is a little too fast, so we're gonna change the time variable value. We will set that to 5,000, so the image will change automatically every five seconds. And that's one way of building the carousel in the Tesla website. All right, guys, so we just learned JavaScript basics. We went to tesla.com and we applied everything that we learned in the beginning of the video, which were the basics of JavaScript, to build the actual Tesla carousel. I think these are the most important concepts when it comes to learning JavaScript and you're just a beginner. That's why I wanted to handpick these for you because I think these would have been the most beneficial when I was first starting to learn JavaScript. Now guys, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel. And if you're serious about this and wanna make this year, the year that you become a six-figure developer, make sure you click the link in the description and join Profit with JavaScript. We've put a lot of love into this course because we see so many of our students getting huge success, landing jobs from $60,000 to $100,000, and we want to see you win. So if you're serious about this, make sure you join Profit with JavaScript. Now, I want to wrap this video up. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you found the acronym helpful. Let us know in the comment section what you want to see next. This was Valentina all the way from Italy, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!